hello friends in today's video i wanted to show you how you can make bendable molds so that when they're dry they stay really really bendy like this this can be very very handy if you are working with curved surfaces so if you're working with jars or if you're working with uh, christmas baubles hearts anything like that anything that has any kind of curve to it this is when it comes in handy of course there are different types of air drying clays out there as well that stay bendable after they are dry for example here i just wanted to show you this is a little mold that i made oh gosh ages ago probably before christmas and it was made with this hobbycraft super light air drying clay um well the one that i have is light blue at the moment so this is what it's going to dry out like so you can still bend it like this but once it's completely dry it can be a little bit fragile so as you can see here I wasn't very careful and I snapped it a little bit. However, if you're if you're careful, you can still bend them after they are fully dry. So this little thing here was made out of Fimo super light clay as well. And when it's dry, it's not bendable. It's very firm. I'm trying to bend it and it doesn't bend. So you can see here, if I go like that, it just kind of breaks. And of course, as you guys know, I am a big fan of Das air drying clay. But um, the problem with it is that once it's fully dry, it's it's not bendable you can't bend it at all it will snap straight away so this can be a very good solution for when you need your molds to be very light and very bendable and it's a very very cheap way to make them so yeah there you go so what i'm gonna use here i know this is a bit extreme but <laughs> that's all i've got at the moment is window and door frame sealant before i came across this i used to use hard as nails so these little ropes were made out of hard as nails um, adhesive you could really use any version of this that you can find so the main reason why I'm making this video is because I know that there are a lot of different materials that people can use different craft supplies that you can use to for your molds that it will stay bendy and stuff but in case if you live somewhere where you don't have access to um, to a craft shop that sells those you're more likely to be able to find one of these in one of your local shops than a fancy craft paste that will stay bendable for you and it's much much cheaper as well so what we're going to need is one of these so either an adhesive like this one hard as nails no more nails whatever they are called at least here in uk they are sold in pretty much any kind of shop that has a little diy section is likely to have one of them in there and i bought this one um in our local shop as well but if you can't find it locally then b and q screw fix places like that will definitely sell it so what we're going to need is one of these and either a palette knife or a, a plastic card or something like that that you can use to scrape away the excess it's very very simple i'm literally just going to take this off and then squeeze some sealant in in here and then we'll make one of these as well and one of these and so i've squirted some in and i'm just gonna take my palette knife and kind of spread it out everywhere like so you will have to keep in mind that the thicker and the bigger your mold is the longer it will take for it to dry of course usually i try to leave these to dry for about 24 hours and so i'm just trying to get this mastic in everywhere without leaving any air bubbles on the inside so right then so one down and i'm just gonna spread this one now if your mold is quite bendy you can bend it like this if you have sort of hard to get into areas somewhere and that kind of just opens these little holes up a little bit more so you can squeeze your paste into it right you guys so i've filled them both in i actually forgot how quickly this stuff starts to set compared to the hard as nails stuff but yeah it's a little bit harder to spread and get it all nice and even which i mean for me isn't really a problem because i um because i love vintagey and shabby chic look anyways so most of the time i end up aging stuff anyways and so if there's any like um bubbles in there or anything like that that's going to make creases in in the mold i don't really mind that as long as they're not too extreme but yeah so i'm gonna leave these to dry now one thing that i wanted to say just in case if i forget when we come to take these out uh is that if you're doing a lace mold so something like this which is like really really thin you're gonna end up with a lot of this kind of whitish film 
like here and so to get rid of it before I take my mold out I usually take a little bit of cotton wool and some nail varnish remover I soak my cotton wool and then I gently go over it and then it dissolves this thin film but the silicone inside stays untouched you just need to be very careful with it and another thing that I wanted to mention if you're gonna get something like this so a window and door frame sealant instead of an adhesive to use for molds make sure that it says on it that it stays flexible and yeah so as you can see See, I've filled the molds and I'm gonna leave them to dry now and I will see you guys tomorrow okay so welcome back so it's actually two days later not the next day so unfortunately yesterday afternoon they weren't fully dry so I left them till the evening and then I did not have the time to get them out so these molds are finally ready to come out so excuse this mess here and this mess here because some certain two-year-olds little fingers got here before me so yeah here's a little tip if you have two-year-old children make sure you put these somewhere really really high when they're trying <laughs> so but they are ready to take out so I actually kind of tested them out already so as you can see they are ready to come out so there you go let's start so as you can see, I did not do a very good job of sticking them in properly. But if you have a bit more time and patience than what I do to spread them out. And I must say that hard as nails spread a lot easier than that sealant stuff that I used for these. However, there you go. It's very, very bendy. You can literally fold it whichever way you want. And just to show you so you could put it on like that or even on a like a little paint pot. See, it just folds over. Let's take them all out and have a look and see if you have li like these little overhangs, you can just take your nail and just nip them off. There you go, beautiful. So even this one, even though on the back it has a little bit of damage to it, look, look at how beautiful it is. If there's only a little bit of excess, you can just pinch it off. But then, like I said, if you have a lot of it, you can just go over it with a little bit of cotton wool and it'll come off. But really, it just kind of, you can just scrape it off. The, like these little borders are perfect for like Christmas baubles or anything like that, or little jars that you might want to do. So if you have a cup like that, you can just go around and it's gonna stay bendy like this forever. <laughs> and of course there is a downside to the fact that it takes quite a while to dry so hard as nails does dry in about 24 hours this stuff even though it started setting a lot quicker than hard as nails while i was spreading it it took longer to actually be fully dry but still if you have no other choice then it is a perfect option and then these little ones as well look And then a little Christmas tree. So this would be perfect for a Christmas bauble. And then the reindeer. so there you go guys so i hope that some of you might find this helpful because i know i definitely did when i first started working with molds when i first found out that you can use um, these kind of glues that was like a whole new world for me and of course the more you start working with them you're going to start looking for things yourself every time that you go into a shop you're going to look in diy sections and see what else you can try and so on but um but yeah so i hope that this might give you an idea of what you could do and maybe um maybe open up a few more new avenues for using molds for 
very curved objects and of course the biggest advice that I can give is be a little bit more patient than I am I am really really bad with that I have zero patience when something doesn't spread out right the first time it takes a lot of mental effort for me to keep going and get it right but of course if you are a bit more patient then you're probably gonna get much better results than I do so yeah I hope that you found this helpful let me know if you have any questions um, there's gonna be links for all of my social media and stuff if you would like to connect with me in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video bye